But for Mia, obviously she doesn't give <laughs> And I don't think she has to. Like, I don't think Mia Khalifa has to value marriage the way other people value it. I don't think Mia Khalifa is a representation of a whole generation and the reason why marriage is an honor, like considered like honorable or important anymore. It was never important. It was always about cattle and exchanging your daughters for money and status. The sanctity of marriage never existed outside of your construct. It never existed in the construct. Love marriages are a new phenomenon. So what was it that you guys are also worried about upholding? Business transactions? Keep them. She is just as business as every marriage that isn't a love marriage. She is just as business as Andrew Tate and all these red pillar guys. She's just as business as anyone else. Oh, we're comparing stats. Baby girl doesn't know that I am Tom Brady at this game. Okay. Married at 18, divorced at 21. Second marriage, married at 25, divorced at 28. Third engagement, engaged at 29, ended it at 30, but I kept the ring. I'm still keeping Tom Brady on his toes. We should not be afraid to leave these men. We are not stuck with these people. Marriage is not a sanctimonious thing thing it is it is paperwork it's something it's 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 a commitment you make to someone but if you feel like you're not getting anything from that commitment and you're trying you gotta go you gotta go you have to go I know it's difficult to fill out paperwork and to make appointments and to do all of these things but this is your life do you want to be stuck with someone period do you want to be stuck um Okay, so for those who don't know who Mia Khalifa is, she's a former porn star. I think she doesn't do porn anymore, right, guys? I think she's out the biz. Um, she's been married and engaged multiple times, apparently. I Look, I have a weird relationship with Mia because, obviously, I do know a lot of workers. I like a lot of workers. Uh, Mia's never been one of the girls that I've liked or followed. She seems like she just has a toxic relationship with herself and others, though, to be fair, a lot of people in adult work do. What, what's the reference to Tom Brady? I know Tom Brady is the football player and he was married to Gis Giselle, Giselle, something. She, he was married to the model. So what, what is the reference to Tom Brady? Has he been married many times? Baby girl doesn't know that I am Tom Brady at this game. Married mm -hmm. at 18, divorced at 21. Second marriage, married at 25, divorced at 28. Third engagement. So obviously, people are, I'm assuming, upset with the fact that she is talking about marriage like it's a relaxed contract with no, nothing sacred or surrounding the concept of it, right? Is that what we're getting at? Is that what we're, oh, he has seven rings like in football and therefore she's like Tom Brady. Is that like a football joke? Th this is too hard for the gays. The football jokes are too hard for the gays. So, okay, so she has a relationship with marriage in which it is a thing you do. Not that deep. Like, I can't really be mad at people for having a casual relationship with marriage when a lot of people do. So for some people, they would never sleep with their friends and have casual sex with their friends. But they're more than happy to marry someone for a green card. For some people, marriage is like one and done. For other people, they like pride themselves in getting married to their very first boyfriend, their very first girlfriend. Everyone has a different relationship with marriage. For some people, it is a legal relationship. And for other people, it's something really significant. For me, it's something super, super significant. For Brittany alone, for me... It is something that is significant. Now, for me, I don't think I need marriage to make it clear that my relationship is my lifelong partnership, but I will say that it's very important to me that we're married for the legal reasons, <laughs> but also the emotional ones. Like, you know, I want to have a little wedding ceremony as much as anybody else and like do a little thing. And so I think for me, I'm romantic and I want that wedding ceremony that's really tiny and intimate and like fast. Like we're getting married at the courthouse. So we're not even doing anything big. My family won't even be able to be there. Um, I'm not really worried about any of that because it's about him and I. It's not about anybody else. But it's important for me to have it for sure. Um, I didn't buy this wedding dress for nothing. Like I'm excited to wear it. I am, you know, I'm excited to make it a part of my wardrobe for sure. You think I'm going to wear that dress once? Oh, no, you're going to see it during live shows, kids. I'm wearing that dress more than once. I'm going to wear it four times a year at least. Um, but yeah, I think everyone has a different relationship with it. 
For me, marriage is super important because I don't just marry someone loosely because it involves legality, because it involves my paycheck, because it involves my reputation, because getting divorced is awful. I didn't even want to do the paperwork to get married. The paperwork to get married, I literally lost more hair. Okay, maybe because it's an international wedding, so it's like a little bit more stressful. Had to get a lot of things apostled, (laughs) you know. But for me, marriage is interestingly like interesting um not interesting that's the wrong word it's it's um intimate intimate it's not interesting it's intimate it's it's something but for mia obviously she doesn't give (laughs) and i don't think she has to like i don't think mia khalifa has to value marriage the way other people value it i don't think mia khalifa is a representation of a whole generation and the reason why marriage is an honor like considered like honorable or important anymore it was never important it was always about cattle and exchanging your daughters for money and status the sanctity of marriage never existed outside of your construct it never existed in the construct love marriages are a new phenomenon so what was it that you guys are also worried about upholding business transactions keep them she is just as business as every marriage that is in a love marriage she is just as business as andrew tate and all these red pillar guys she's just as business as anyone else so i don't see the difference like what's the difference between me khalifa and all of those people like i I just don't get it i think it's irresponsible in terms of being my partner i wouldn't be excited if my partner was married multiple times. I wouldn't be excited if my partner thought marriage was um, something to do casually. I'm open to the fact that my partner might think of marriage something like a business transaction, but not something casual because I want somebody who's aware of like, again, the legality of marrying somebody, right? And how it could be fraud to the US government and how there's consequences and how, you know, there. There's a real consequence to getting married. Yeah, I'm not really seeing why people are upset with her. When most people talk about enduring abuse in relationships, when most people talk about marriage like it is a business contract, what what is the thing that makes marriage special? For me, it's the romance and the love and the commitment. For other people, like, what is it? What is it that makes your marriage important to you? Why do people get upset when people want to leave? Like, I don't understand. What is... What is other people's relationship to their weddings, to their marriages, you know? Yeah, I don't understand why people are really mad with her. I, 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 st- I don't believe you. I do not believe you if you're mad at Mia Khalifa over this take. It's just so basic for most people. Most people I meet don't care about marriages. Most people are getting married in Vegas and moving on and getting divorced after two to five years. Most people I know think I'm crazy for not believing in divorce outside of abuse. Like, I believe, like, unless there is abuse, no divorce for me, for Brittany. Because again, I would never get married to somebody that I wasn't a thousand percent sure about because I care about marriage. Do you see the difference? I, Brittany, would never have said yes to my partner if I wasn't a thousand percent sure that he was the one that I want to spend my life with. Which means, why would I divorce the most perfect person I've ever been with? Why would I divorce the person I've been waiting for for 33 years? Why would I divorce the person that I love the most unless we cross the boundaries into abuse territory. Why would I leave him? Now, I saw a TikTok. Mm, it's on my, hold on, let me see if I can grab it for you guys, hold on. Okay, so this video, which you guys should now see on your screens. <laughs> okay, I saw this video on TikTok and thought, oh, this kind of reminds me of the conversation we're having around Mia Khalifa, but specifically around divorce. And I thought we could listen to it together and then we could kind of have a conversation in relation to also Mia Khalifa, but divorce in general, okay? I'm going to turn up the volume here. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. I think it's why a lot of people didn't understand why I got divorced because my ex-husband is genuinely a good person. Right. And they were like, why did you leave? And I was like, because I continually asked for things that never got changed, had really open communication with him about what was making me unhappy. And it never changed. Trying and I was help. done perpetuating the cycle. I just didn't want to keep putting myself in that position to be let down every single time. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to set that boundary. It's okay to walk away. Right. And like, we have a much better friendship than we ever did a relationship. That's awesome. Yeah, we are very similar. That way. I think it's why a lot of people didn't understand why I got. Okay, so we have Mia Khalifa, who's making the stance of like, get divorced if you're not happy type thing. This lady who says like, my husband, my ex-husband was a really good person. 
I just, I asked for things and he couldn't, you know, follow through. And that's a boundary of mine. I think that's a nice way of saying your husband was like a piece of I think that's a nice way of saying my husband not only neglected my feelings, but did not care for me or see me as a person. I think that's a really nice way of saying my ex-husband was somebody who neglected me. I think that's a really nice way of saying my ex-husband was a good person who basically couldn't fulfill the vows of being a husband. Yeah, cool. So like in my relationship, this would be considered abuse. But in your relationship, it might not be. So she says, my ex-husband is a good person. It's just in the marriage, every time I asked for anything, he couldn't fulfill those vows. So maybe it wasn't abusive. Maybe he was literally neglectful. Maybe he had a brain tumor. Maybe he had such a weird disability, he couldn't fulfill them. Maybe he was super forgetful. Maybe, 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 maybe. See, we don't know the whole context. But to me, mm, I'm not really sure what being a good person is, right? Except my, my definition of one. So to be generous to people, I always say everyone's a good person because everyone's kind of trying their best, even though to me, it's not good enough. It's good enough because this is what they're capable of. I think we're, we ask too much of humanity because humanity has proven time and time again, it is unreliable and at the same time, super reliable and at the same time, super unreliable. And at the same time, right, it's kind of that balance you have between chaos and consistency. Look, I love my parents. I love them so much and they are so reliable in so many ways, but they are also not the kindest people when it comes to being LGBT. They are also people who would promote and honestly protect people that I think would be dangerous. And so to some, ex you know, to some extent, I love them, but from a distance. And I do think they're good people in their own way, but they don't match my requirement of like a, a truly what I would think is a safe person. And I think good and safe are not the same thing. So when I say people are good, I mean they're doing their best, but that doesn't mean they're safe right? I think we equate safety and good together. So Mia Khalifa might be a good person, but I would say she's maybe not safe in some ways because she's a little unstable to me. But I'm not sure what that means either because I don't know Mia Khalifa. This lady, when she talks about her ex-husband, I'm like, oh, he might be a good person, but he doesn't sound very safe because he doesn't sound like somebody who's able to fulfill the vows that I assume he would have understood the weight of. But again, I don't know him and I'm making assumptions. It could be, it could not be right? Because we don't know these people. So for me, when I hear this and I hear this woman talk, I think to myself, yeah, he might be a good person because what is good? What does that even mean to be good, right? What does it mean to be good? But he sounds like a very bad husband. He sounds like a very irresponsible partner. If my partner in all of his consciousness, like if my partner, who I think is very introspective, neglected me in such a fashion that we would face divorce, like, that would be abusive because I didn't choose a partner that would neglect me in that way. And it's not a matter of, oh, my partner is going through something. My partner is, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, to conscientiously choose to neglect your partner is quite, I think, a crime in emotion, not legality in emotion. It's such a crime, right? So this woman to say like, my husband's a good, per or my ex-husband's a good person, but he neglected me is very hard, right? So yeah, like everyone's a good person, sure. And everyone's doing their best, sure. But what does it mean, right? So for me, again, when I took, or I'm gonna take these vows very soon here, I'm taking these vows, I'm saying, I'm giving myself to you. I want you to give yourself to me. I want us to be a team. I want us to be equals. I want us to be the greatest team that's ever lived. I want us to be number one. You know what I'm saying? When I'm telling my partner, like this, I, like, I love you and this is very serious to me. I am actually saying that I will make a concerted effort to not neglect you. I'm going to make a concerted effort to make it so we don't end up in divorce court because it is a very big possibility. We both believe in divorce. We believe it's an option for abuse situations. We are going to both make a concerted effort to not go to divorce court. But that's because we value the longevity of the relationship, the joy of the relationship. Mia Khalifa doesn't sound like she has that relationship with marriage. And I think that's okay. And neither does this woman's partner, her ex-partner. This woman sounded like she tried, but her ex-partner seemed to, he made the decision not to make a concerted effort to not end up in divorce court, in my opinion. Are we really that mad at Mia Khalifa? Are you really mad at Mia Khalifa for not caring about marriage? Who cares if Mia Khalifa doesn't care about marriage? Don't care about Mia Khalifa's opinion. What, does she run your life? Does she, does she is Mia Khalifa the arbiter of like healthy marriages? Ignore her. 
why would you care about her advice about marriage? Like, unless you care about marriage the same way she cares about marriage, which is like that it's just this like flippant thing, right? I think Philip DeFranco said it. He was like, look, I'm not really like anti-divorce, but I'm also like not pro Mia Khalifa stance. It's more like, hey, you should like value the person that you're with and make an effort and love them. You know, it's like maybe we shouldn't be so excited to treat marriage like dating. But a lot of people get married to keep dating their partners. Fine. Fine. But like, you know, not everyone's in it for the same reasons, right? Hayda says she doesn't um, have kids. She can do whatever she wants. That's another thing too, right? Is like, there's no kids. I assume her partners are also in agreement to sort of dating Mia Khalifa. Like if you're going to date Mia Khalifa, let's say you're the fourth husband or whatever relationship number she's on. I'm going to assume you're going to see this clip and you're going to be like her. So it's not going to be a big deal for you. Lots of people get married and divorce, get married and divorce, get married and divorce. Like, that's fine. Like, you do you. I'm not about it. But like, you do you. Jessica says, simply not wanting to be together, falling out of love should be good enough reason to leave. I'm not going to be abusing someone or getting abused to leave. I'm leaving if I don't see our future. Yeah, my whole thing is like, I don't know how. Okay, marriage is a business decision. Let's say it's a marriage, like a business decision. I've never seen a divorce, even the ones that went well, that wasn't a pain in the ass. To get divorced, file the paperwork, change your name. So again, am I the only one, like, who feels like I'm just not going to get married, like, casually? Because I'm not filing that much paperwork for a casual thing. Like, there's no way I would do marriage casually just for the paperwork alone. You know what I mean? I just, mm mm Discord says, as Mia was talking, I was thinking, why follow advice from someone who chose wrong three times? Well, that's how some people feel. But that's the thing. If you don't look at marriage as like longevity or like together with your soulmate or the one or I'm going to marry the one in a, the one of millions who are compatible with me for long term cohabitation, then she didn't choose wrong. She just got married for funsies or got engaged for funsies. Like, I don't know if you can choose wrong in a game where there is no consequence to choosing wrong in a real way. Like if divorce is like dating and you can just break up and get divorced, then to me, you don't like choose wrong, right? Like she didn't get, it doesn't sound to me like she got engaged or married with the idea that she had chosen right. She was just like, to me, it sounded like she was saying like, this sounds fun, I'm bored, why not? That's how it came off to me. Jessica says, if I don't love you, you should be with somebody who does love you. I want us both to be happy and someone can fall out of love with good people too. Compatibly growing together takes a lot of into account. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I again, the category of person that I am, I could never fall out of love with, I don't fall out of love with people. I don't understand that concept except for people that I knew was never the one. Like I've never dated somebody that I fell out of love with and ever thought they were the one one. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I've never been with somebody that I wasn't like, hmm, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think this is it. Like, you know what I, again, this is just me because I do believe like there is a select group of people on the planet, like millions of them that you're super, super, super compatible with that you fall in love with. I'm not sure you could fall out of love once you know that consciousness. But I'm, but you does, but just because you don't fall out of love doesn't mean you can't get divorced either. Even if you're still in love, if if it's time to go, it's time to go. But I think to say that it's casual makes me confused. I think because, again, just to, maybe it's so hard for me to fall in love with the right person that I'm. I can't imagine. Yeah, I'm equating getting married and falling in love. So again, if you're getting married because it's funsies, you do you. But I couldn't get married to somebody. You maybe okay. Maybe it's the way that I literally grew up thinking about relationships, but you're looking for a very select group of people to marry. I am like a very small pool of people that you might never meet in your lifetime. And if you're lucky, you get to meet those pool of people that are really, really compatible that you can really love the consciousness of. And so I was really lucky and I met one of those many people and I picked him and we're good. But I can't recreate what I have with him with just anybody. It would be it would have to be some of those select people that I assume are in the world. And if I had never met him or any of them, I just would have stayed single. I never could have. Because to me, if you can. Yeah, I don't really get it. Like, I don't think I understand. But I could imagine it. Because I that's what I mean when I say like people are always settling in their marriages. And that's why 
everyone is so casual about falling out of love and leaving them. I'm assuming we're not talking about the same thing when I say like the partner that I have found is very specific. Like he's, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, maybe I'm being too romantic about this, but it's like Elizabeth Bennett couldn't have been with anyone but Darcy, but also could have been with many people, just not Wickham and not any of the other men. Like it had to have been Darcy and or some other mythical Darcy. But like, there's only a certain amount of people that could date Elizabeth Bennett. You know what I'm saying? Not just anybody could date Elizabeth Bennett. That's what I'm saying. Like, does that make sense? <laughs> Hayda says, what's the benefit of marriage other than taxes? Um, I mean, immigration, right? I'm dealing with immigration right now. Um, I feel like marriage or a wedding, right? Because I feel like for me, marriage is just saying that I'm going to go down this very specific route with you, but I didn't need the marriage to solidify my commitment to my marriage, to my, my relationship. You're right there. So the benefit of marriage is obviously the legality. You can move through the world better. People treat you better. It's definitely a status thing, but to the partner you're with, like for me, I don't casually do marriage. I don't casually go into business with people. I don't casually do a lot with people. I'm not a casual person like that. So for me, it's just a matter of saying like, this is what I prioritize as ways to see me vulnerable. So the benefit of marriage is obviously like a show of like commitment sort of for the world, but it's not necessarily for you, but it also isn't for the world because the world doesn't respect it. It depends on the bubble you're in. But I couldn't do marriage casually because it's like attached to my bag. It's attached to my life. It's attached to paperwork. Like I couldn't do it casually. Discourse says to me, uh, in a marriage, if you fall out of love, you do the work to fall back in love and rediscover the consciousness that you fall in love with. If that... If that effort not reciprocated, then maybe the question of divorce comes up. I'm no expert. I've never been. Oh, I've only been married a year. Well, honestly, like, what does it mean to fall out of love? I'm not sure what that means. Like, can you stop loving your child? Do you get what I mean? Like, I couldn't, I don't stop loving my siblings just because I fight with them. I, you know what I mean? I'm not building a life with them, but I can't stop knowing that the consciousness that is my sibling exists in the universe. I'm so close to my family, even though we argue and we disagree. And if the war broke out, like I'd be on the progressive side, they'd be on the conservative side. But like, I can't deny that the consciousness that is them is so unique to me in the whole universe that I can't stop loving them. So for me, like, I can't even imagine like falling out of love with my partner. I could imagine being again abused in a situation and feeling like for the safety of my mental and physical and financial health, I have to leave this marriage. But I don't know that I could imagine not being in love with them, but I feel like that must be a phenomenon people do go through because I hear that in marriages. I've just, to be honest with you, I haven't, my parents didn't go through that in their 35 years of marriage. Plus my other couple that I always use as like my example of my favorite couple, they didn't really go through that from what I know about that relationship. So I know that happens, but I I have a hard time conceptualizing it as something I could go through. So I wonder if it's a category of person, like types of people who get in relationships, not good or bad. I'm not making a judgment call on these people, obviously. But I'm not sure I could imagine it. You know what I mean? I'm not sure I could imagine, unless you're settling, no offense, then I could imagine falling out of love with somebody because you're already settling. So of course there's that gap in consciousness, oh, like, like knowing that consciousness and connecting with it where you would have a gap. Does that make sense? Okay, hold on. Discord said something great. Discord said maybe it's more of more so losing sight of things and getting kind of sick of them and getting in a rut in the relationship rather than actually falling out of love. Now that I could see. That I could see. Getting stressed, feeling bogged down, forgetting why you fell in love. That I could see. I could see even mourning through the process. Like maybe it's the words we're using, but I could see like, oh my gosh, I have loved you for 20 years years what are we doing why are we feeling connected what happened like I could see that and I would call that not falling out of love I would call that hey we've like lost connection in the relationship but I think that's different right 
that's like I'm that's like well maybe it's different to me because I'm thinking of it differently but it could just be the same thing we're all describing differently you know what I mean people change slavery sucks thank you discord yeah obviously you don't want to look at your marriage like a slavery thing like you don't want to think like oh I'm trapped in this marriage forever like get a fucking divorce but like that would be considered like abuse to be trapped in a marriage right like you can't trap someone in a marriage that's abusive if somebody wants to leave you have to respect their consent but if you have a belief around marriage going into it, then you would have the mindset, okay, that getting a divorce outside of abuse is weird. So when you, so there's a, there's the nuance, right? There's the moment when you're like, hey, I think I'm out of, like, I, I think I want to leave this marriage to all the way to actually talking to your partner, confronting your partner, discussing the nuances. Hey, I think I've changed all the way to I'm ready to get divorced and then being like, you can't divorce me. Okay, well, that's not how it works. They can divorce you. So obviously, you don't want to stay trapped in a marriage that's abusive. But before they deny you the right to leave the marriage, why did you want to leave the marriage in the first place if there was no abuse? And if it's because I was bored or I changed, that's great. But for people like me, that is a very odd answer. <laughs> I changed doesn't make any sense to me because that basically means you changed and you didn't tell me you do not people do not change overnight what happened what happened in your life where you neglected to tell me why didn't you bring me on your journey how did you change without telling me so in my mind people do not change overnight which means you to the to the person you love the most in the world if your marriage is about being in love you're with this person and either they didn't go along with you, they didn't listen to you, they didn't acknowledge your feelings, they didn't do all these things, fine, divorce them, right? Because like that could be abuse, right? Divorce your partner if they don't listen to your feelings, right? But again, I think of it as a partnership, partners in crime, you two against the world. So I feel like, and this is just me, I tell my partner everything, I tell him what I'm feeling this way or that way, or he asks me every five seconds, like, how are you doing? And I go, this is how I'm doing. And I check in with him, hey, how are you doing? And we talk about it. But there, I don't, I can't just wake up one day and look at him and be like, I'm not in love with you anymore. It doesn't work that way. I think people tell themselves that way, that, that, but I think they deny themselves to their partners to some extent, maybe because they're scared, but then call it abuse and say you're an abuse victim, right? Or just move on. But I think a lot of people don't communicate to people. And I think they start to check out before they're communicating to their partner, right? But not all the time. Nuance, everyone's different. Everyone has their own relationship with these things. Ah, see, Katie, great example. I fell out of love I fell out of love with who I thought someone was, not who they actually were. Same. Same. So I think, right? Like that, that is what is actually happening. I think a lot of people are falling out of love with versions of their partners, but not actually the consciousness. Like, I think they're, that's what I'm, oh my God. That's what I try to explain to my family. The reason I chose my partner is because I really love this person as they are. I have no pro projected hope for who he will be. I have no desire to marry who he'll be, who he will become. There's no version of him that exists in my head that I'm like, oh, one day he'll be this person. No, I like the person that he is now. And now that we're together as exactly the people we like, we'll grow together because we're going to be on the same page as much as possible, as much as we can, right? But that's the point is like I have fallen out of love with people who I was in love with their projected self, the version of their self I would hope they would eventually be. So I can understand those circumstances. But again, those partnerships were not the same thing I'm experiencing now. What I'm experiencing now is genuinely loving every part of the person that I am with. Even their faults are like so like um uh easy to deal with my faults are easy to deal with like we look at each other's like like my borderline and he's like I got it and I was like oh my god for somebody else people would be like oh my god don't ever date Brittany she has borderline but for him he's like nah I got it because it's easy he knows I'm keeping it up or ma we do maintenance like it's good you know what I mean what could be a red flag for somebody else for him is like nah I got it right everyone has a part of their relationships in which they're hoping their partner may change and I think that's fair because sometimes that happens in a partnership. Um, but again, are we holding on to, I hope you become a person you were never going to be, which I think is toxic. 
Or, hey, like, we need to get back on track with our life, right? We need to, like, root for you to be better. I want to pull us up. I want us to make each other better. I think that's different. People go through hard moments. They have up and downs in their life, right? Obviously, if my partner had a horrific accident or if I did, like, we'd have to help each other, right? Discord says we will grow together. Sure. Maybe, maybe not. It does not have to be abuse for people to grow apart and feel drawn in directions they don't want to share. For sure. 100%. But then we're not talking about the same thing that, like, I'm experiencing or that my parents experienced or that that couple I always talk about who've been together for 40 something years that they experienced. I think there's a category of people that exist in the world that are truly experiencing like meeting those people that they cannot grow apart from. That they will and call me out. Watch my channel for the next 20 years and call me out and see if I'm still married in 20 years. But I'm going to make a bet with myself that I fit into that category because I I couldn't have been anyone else. I've been proposed to before and I've said no. Because I knew, I was like, no, if I marry this person, I'm going to be settling. We're going to be divorced within three to five years. I just knew. I was like, no, because I'm dating you for your potential and you haven't reached it yet. But with this person, again, like, it's of course, it's not automatically abuse to grow apart. That's not what I'm saying. But to a person like me, it's not comprehensible. I can't understand what you're saying. Like, I know what you're saying logically. But emotionally, I don't understand what you're saying. My partner, my parents are never going to grow apart. Like my parents are not the kind of people who could get divorced and remarried. They're not those kinds of people. Like, did you guys see Up? Um, up. <laughs> you know the old man? What's his name? Carl? The old, what's his name? Carl? The old man in Up. Okay. He never gets remarried. But there's a short in the beginning of the new Disney movie where he goes on a date and some people felt betrayed by that where they were like, no, he cannot remarry. He was in love. Like, what are you doing? And I think that's true. For some people, they do not date again after their spouses die. They can't. My grandparents, they there's no reality where when my grandparents, both my grandpas lost their my grandmas and they had like 10 years, 20 years to live after that. There is not a reality where they date other people, which is, again, I'm not saying it's better or worse or different. People who are divorced should get remarried. That's awesome. But I'm saying it's a certain category of person. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Now, again, I'm, I'm not saying all things are black and white. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm saying your relationship is bad. I'm saying we're dealing with very specific kinds of people. Like one of the one of the reasons why my partner and I have a rule of like if one of us disappears or dies, we have to wait five years just to make sure they're actually dead is because like we don't want to just move on. We didn't work this hard to find each other just to move on. Like we want to make sure. And that's, by the way, I'm only getting remarried if he dies and I'm like, and I find that other person in the statistical probability of very unique people who could date me. Otherwise, like, girl, I'm not doing that. No, especially not at 70 or 80 or 90. Like, I'm not getting remarried. Like, it, it's totally great when people get divorced and remarried. That's amazing. That's good. That's beautiful. That's amazing. It is not abuse for you to get married and grow apart from somebody. But again, if you're going into marriage with the mindset, which is fine, I'm not judging you, okay? You're just getting defensive, <laughs> okay, Mia Khalifa? If Mia wants to go into her marriages like that, that's fine. But then we're not talking about the same thing, girl. Me and Mia Khalifa are not doing marriage the same way. Just like none of us do life the same way. You gotta find people who do who do life the same way. Uh, Vianney says, I think they mean falling out of romantic love, not stop loving the person. Good to know. What do you guys think? When we're talking about falling out of love in a relationship, do we mean falling out of romantic love? Or do we mean stopping loving that person? And how does that change the priority of that person in your life? If you romantically fall out of love with them and you still love them, do you then, do you ever talk to them again? Do you get divorced? Are you friends? Are they a part of your life? What does that mean, right? Okay, hold on. I'm totally behind on chat and I want to catch up. Um, Laura says, how do we define abuse though? In the terms of making divorce permissible, abuse has been watered down to a more subjective term. I think it is subjective and it's also, um, I think abuse is subjective, but I, I also think there is a probable, probable, uh, capital T truth about what abuse is. I just don't know that we can really define it as a species. 
just because of the nuance and the reality of like the spectrum of people existing like it's just too subjective though i Brittany, am very judgmental about what is abuse and i am very clear about what i think red flags are maddox says love for me is knowledge i cannot stop knowing feeling it might be clouded but that means the other issues are afoot mm. discord said part of why marriage scares me is because it's like saying quote I understand things change and I'm committed to accepting you for how you may change in the future, end quote. But what if they change in a way I don't like? So this makes sense to me, right? But again, this is what it comes, this is why it comes down to values and also why people recommend age. Now I dated older, right? But also certain people live in certain bubbles and never leave. Like there's no reality where farm brother and his wife stop being Catholic. Like my parents are never going to become staunch atheists and all of a sudden like flash their boobs and become feminists and shave off their hair. Like I would bet a million dollars, like my, a billion lifetimes that my parents would never do this because some people don't change and it's for the better. Some people never change out of their concrete foundational bubble and it's for the better. That's why they are able to make their marriages work because my farm brother and his wife probably will never stop being Catholic. It just would be so weird. If my farm brother came to me one day and he's like, hey, I'm going to be a liberal. I'd be like, the fuck? Ew. Why? I'm the liberal. What are you going to be the liberal for? Like, it wouldn't even make sense for who he is as a person. It could technically happen. Oh, it'd be so weird. Like, guys, it would literally floor me. Like, I would be like, what? Who? Like, it was always clear when I was like four years old that I'd end up an atheist. I'm going to be real with you. When I was a child, my mom knew I was gay. She knew I was gay. That's why she brought it up all the time. She was like, I just want to make sure you don't like girls, Brittany. And I'm like, oh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's crazy. That's what's crazy. I just think some people change. I've worked really hard on becoming a person that changes in a very specific direction, but won't most likely change my values. It would be very weird for me all of a sudden to become a Catholic again. It'd be really weird if I came to my partner and was like, you know what? I'm anti-gay marriage. I've decided fuck the homosexuals. No homosexuals. Because again, what does it mean to change except in values? You know what I'm saying? Maybe lifestyle, maybe lifestyle, but hopefully you would grow together. But then I would argue because I think so much of what we know and like is dependent on our tools and knowledge, of course, but also what bubbles in, what bubbles we are in and how we're willing to defy those bubbles, right? Now she says, what if the person is aware of how you're changing this whole time, but you're just not the right fit anymore, Brittany? That's fine too, obviously. But then again, are we saying that we're not the right fit because we've changed values or we're not the right fit because now I want to spend, like, I, what, what's the change look like, right, guys? Because look, again, I'm not all overnight, just be, I'm not going to become a conservative overnight, right? That's not going to happen. I already, I already went through that transformation. I can't go back to being Catholic, even though my mom is praying with all her might that I do. She's praying so hard that I become a Catholic again. Do we really think that's going to happen? Or am I going to be the grandma on OnlyFans who is not a grandma because I might not have kids? <laughs> like, Do you get what I mean? Like, what does it mean when you say you got, like, people change? Do you mean your values change? Do you mean the way you want to live your life changes? Does that mean at 50 you discover you're into BDSM and you want to change your Christian, Catholic, like, Orthodox, Jewish, Muslim life into a BDSM one? Like, what do you mean? Do you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Like, I want a concrete idea of what kind of person we're dealing with. You know what I mean? Because I understand when I was in my 20s, I would tell people like, I'm changing, I'm figuring out like this is, I'm sure this is the answer, but also I'm questioning. And now I'm at the stage where I'm like, okay, questioning less about my foundational beliefs. Like we're animals on a planet evolved over time. I think I'm a unique consciousness. I believe in gay rights. I believe in minority rights. I believe that there is, you know, hostility in the world because of different beliefs, but also different beliefs are beautiful. But also I know what I believe and how I think I should treat people with kindness and openness and compassion and all these things. But also I have my limits. I'm open with boundaries. But like it, my partner, I asked him one time, I was like, hey, if I came to you and I was like, babe, I'm Catholic now. He'd be like, I would literally have you see a therapist. He was like, I would literally assume you've gone insane. And I was like, <laughs> based, he loves me. My mother would not. My mother, if I came to her and was like, mom, I'm Catholic now. She'd be like, oh, finally. She would never even question if I was fucking in psychosis. But my partner, he'd be like, hey, 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 
this is not the woman I married. And he knows because he asks me every day about my thoughts. So unless I'm lying to the person I've committed myself to, unless I'm lying to the person I've given myself to, right? Unless I'm lying to them and never telling him that I'm thinking about God and never telling him that I'm thinking about going to church and never tell him that I'm having doubts about my atheism and never tell him, then why would I all of a sudden become Catholic? Why would I ever go on this journey without him? Now, if I, for some reason, <laughs> went a little cray cray and was like, hey, babe, I am thinking about God. Is she real? Is she a thing? Should we start worshiping her? I think we could have a conversation about that. I think we should have a conversation about that, right? I think we should have a conversation about what it means to believe in God at that point. But I would tell him right away if I was having any of those thoughts. You know what I mean? Peanut butter bacon says, I think people don't fully think about who they want to be with forever. They find someone who is good for the moment and jump head first. Then they grow and realize how different they are. And um, they are. And people don't think about that when they are younger. For sure. So that's what I'm assuming does happen. I'm assuming what's actually happening, what's actually happening is that people are, right, in the moment. They're like, hey, this person's really cool. I love them. Oh, my gosh. Vibes. One of the reasons people are doubting my relationship with my partner is because they still think we've only been together three months. First of all, hilarious that people on the internet are all like, uh, Brittany's only been with him for three months. Y'all, it's been three months for over a year. <laughs> like, it's been a long time. But a lot of people are like, you can't know him this quick. What are you doing? Why are you jumping into this marriage? I get it. Yeah. I get it. I've been there, right? I've met people and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this my person? Only to discover that I'm like, mm, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, this one, this one is my person. And I didn't need a lot of time to figure that out because, again, what I'm looking for is very specific. And you know it when you know it. And it's very specific. I think a lot of people, you know that saying, like, you'll know when you know? I think a lot of people delude themselves into thinking they're experiencing the you know, you know. I do. I think a lot of people are pretending, but they don't know it because they're caught up in the moment of when you know, you know. Do you guys feel me? Because again, I've dated people and I'm like, is this my person? And I thought, man, this seems really right. But as I dated them and dated them and dated them, I was like, oh, we have to do a lot of work for us to even get to a place where we are like cohesive and not fighting every day, which is not, you know, when you know. It was just, oh, I met a person that I really connected with and I felt very powerful, you know, because I've met a lot of people I had great chemistry with. Some people that I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? But it wasn't the, you know, you know, it was the intense chemistry, which disguises itself as the, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, it was the chem, it was the, the chemistry, the va va voom, you know. Peanut butter bacon says, yeah, when you say you know, you know, it's true when you actually know. Uh, I find actually knowing takes age and time to know yourself. I do too. I think you have to be really sure about who you are, like so committed to the consciousness that you are in the moment. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Lakara says, not going to lie. I also thought you only dated your partner for three months before moving in together. It's not about time. It's about compatibility and the willingness to stick it out and the willingness not to stick it out and endure abuse. It's about, it's about loving the consciousness for truly who they are. So again, my partner is not replaceable. I cannot replace him with somebody else. I can date somebody who's just as good for me, but I can't replace him. I can't replace this person. I can't. So again, we're not talking about perfect, meaning no flaws. We're not talking about perfect, like we're never going to have problems. We're talking about perfect because our values are the same and we can actually problem solve all and any bad things that are going to happen in this marriage because of outside sources, because of inside sources, because of sickness or in health or in poor, in poor or rich or whatever. We know we're going to be fine because we're going to default to these values that we believe in. Right? Right?
Um, Hayda says, how would you describe a person who thinks they know and a person who actually knows that their partner is the one? Hindsight? God. <sighs> I'd really have to think about that. And again, it's not like the one, like 8 billion people and there's only one person you're compatible with. It's more like there's a group of people. Let's say there's a million people. And this select group of people, I believe, this is anecdotal, are going to be the group of people that are going to be like you are quote unquote one when you know you know. And if you're lucky in a lifetime, you come across one of them, right? And I think it's better to come across one of them or to stay single. But some people want to settle in relationships and that's fine. I just couldn't bear it. I couldn't. I couldn't face my partner every day if I knew internally I was settling. I would just feel so devastated for them to think like, oh, I'm in love with her. She's the best person. And then in my head, I'm, I'm settling for them. Like I would just feel that's so abusive and manipulative unless we both decided to settle for each other. You know those friends who are like, hey, if we're both single at 45, we'll marry each other. That's settling, right? That's a version of settling. So I think, again, I live in this like – um this this reality where I get to just make a choice and I don't mind being single. My parents also taught me never to settle. They told me never to settle because divorce is horrible. It's very hard to go through, right? My parents taught me never to settle, which is not the same as compromise. I don't know why people think these are the same things. Maybe in your bubble they are. So how would I describe a person who thinks they know and a person who actually knows? I want to say the proof is in the pudding, but it's not quite that either. Sometimes I meet couples and sometimes they're even my callers and they'll start dating somebody, right? And they'll ask me, like, Brittany, do you think we're going to stand the test of time? And I was like, girl, you do you. You do you. But in the back of my head, I'm like, no, you're going to fucking fail. But I don't want to move people in a direction. I, want, I don't want them to have the, my voice in the back of their head. So I'm always very supportive. And I'm like, hey, that's not my decision. And I'm not going to make a guess for this, like, for your life. You know what I'm saying? Maybe for some people I would. But, like, most of the time I'm like, you do you. I trust you. Have fun. Do you. You know, figure it out. And then when the relationship fails, because it does, and they come to me and they're like, did you see this happening? I'm like, girl, let me tell you. This moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment. And they're like, oh. And I was just like, well, look, I you wouldn't have been able to see it, though. Like, if I had predicted this and it hadn't happened yet, and then it happened like you had to do it in life. Have you ever seen those TikToks when you see your bestie loving another lesson, but she thinks it's the one? It's just another lesson, girl. It's just another lesson in life. You're either dating a lesson, a tool, if you will, uh, gathering a wisdom or you are with the one because of all the tools and wisdom you've gathered. You can actually pick it out. But uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't always, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in life, myself included, you got to date some of the wrong ones sometimes. Sometimes you got to move in. Sometimes you got to get pregnant. Sometimes you got to get an STI. Sometimes you got to get a divorce. Yeah. Sometimes you got to marry the wrong person. Ask me a Khalifa. You know, that's a joke. She hasn't found the right one yet. In my head, in real life, found that my belly's being fed. I'm okay, I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess, please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool.